Hello, this is Christy. Welcome to another tutorial for Zara Designer Pro. And as we are going through all of the tools, today we are doing the 3D tool. Now, of course, Zara is not a 3D program and, you know, that ability is better left to better software out there, but it still has a little bit of 3D in here if you're stranded or you need to do some sort of 3D effect for some object. So you will find the 3D tool in this menu here where you may have the mold tool by default or the bevel tool. If you just hold your mouse and on top of it with these little arrows, you can see it right here. It's called the 3D tool. So how does this work? Well, when you click on this, it uh, transforms your mouse cursor into some sort of a crosshair with a 3D object on it to suggest that you are now in 3D mode. And, you know, don't be fooled. You're not going to get a full 3D tool in here. It's just applying 3D effects to an object. So it's really like a transformation object uh, effect. So let's see how this works. First of all, we need to create an object. So we will go to our trusty old star, click on the star, and there you have it. This is a five point star. Nothing special here. Let's make it stand up right like this. So how does this work with the 3D? So select your object first and then go to the 3D tool and you notice the cursor and just simply drag on your object and look at this. You notice the object has suddenly become a 3D little biscuit or whatever you want to call it. Notice that as you turn it around in 3D space, you lift, you know, left and right, up and down, all of this. It actually has a bit of a glossiness to it. So there it's, it's very obvious that there is a light source here somewhere. You, you can see it. So let's leave this object sort of like this and see what we can change. As with all the tools in Zara, the top bar here has changed and you have all these controls that actually allow you to change properties of this effect you're applying now. So as you can see, there's the extrude depth here. So you can use this drop down to select the property you want to change and then use the slider to actually change the property. So let's leave it on the extrude depth. And if I click on the slider, notice the depth of my object changes. So I can get up to 250. I, I maybe if I try 450, it still does it. So it's not a maximum, but uh, you know, it is a maximum for the slider. If you click on the slider, it brings it right down. Another thing you can change is if you go to the angle, you can of course use the angle, but I wouldn't, I don't know why you would do this with the drop down since you can just use your mouse and just grab the object and rotate it in any direction you like. Another thing you can change here is the light angle. So now that's something you can't really change unless you press the light button here. If you click on this, it actually shows you the lights that have effect on this object right now. So I'm rotating my, uh, my object, the lights stay fixed. If I click on one of the lights, I can move the light. Again, I can drag, click and drag this light so that, you know, I, I kind of spin it around the object. Now, if you find it hard to control the light, it's because, you know, you need to just drag further and further away. So dragging left and right kind of rotates the light and then up and down kind of moves it up and down. So let's bring this light to the front. And if you noticed, the light has a different color. Every light has a different color. So what happens if I click on this light and change its color to maybe green? There you go. My object is green now, but if I click on the color and drag it, I can change the light color. So now my light is yellow. My object is green. I can click on my object and make it orange again, like it was. And this light of mine is here. I can pull it back a bit. So now let's make this light blue. So I'm going to go to this blue, drag it on top of the light. Notice the cursor changes to indicate that I'm changing the color of this light. Now this light may be a bit sort of on the wrong face there. So if I bring it to the front, it blends in with the color of my object. Let's try this one. This one is sort of normal neutral, I guess. Let's try a red light. Just see what happens. Click on this. There you go. I've got a red light on this side. And if you move it up and down, it affects the shadow, the light and the glossiness and everything. So my object now, I can um, spin it around. See so if I go to extrude depth, make it not so big and then take off the light control. And now I am moving my object around like that. The light still has effect on it. So whichever side 
is pointing to that light will take the color of that light so if you remember on the bottom left here my light was sort of blue and uh, now if I if I turn my object around it kind of takes that color okay if you click on the extrusion space as you can see it changes the extrusion so Zara is trying to kind of anticipate and figure out what property you're trying to change when you click in certain areas so of course if I move on the front and I click it rotates the object because I have grabbed the front if I grab on the side it changes the extrusion if I go to the lights and I click on the light you know it changes the light and here I can control some other things like the bevel so there's a second drop down here that allows me to change different properties like the roundness of the edges so I can make them very very sharp you notice here or I can make them round and fat like this or I can change all of these other properties for example the per 45 degree bevel is you know I'm, I'm creating a bevel here and I can change it so um, it's got different types of edges maybe I want to have a angled sort of extrusion then so then it's going to be like from the middle of the extrusion and it gives you all sorts of different shapes you can apply this 3d effect to other objects like for example text so this is a 3d text right so I've got this 3d text in here I'm going to make it larger make it uh, maybe orange again and if I click on 3d and start dragging there you go my 3d text has become of course 3d and I have 3D, 3D text. So again, the same thing with the lights and so on. You can make it fat and juicy square. You know, you change the outline, you change the inside, so you get it. And um, of course you can change the sort of the points of the uh, corners of the object. So notice if I turn it around like this and I change this to pointy, the corners are pointy and now they are rounded maybe that's not the best position for it so there you have it this is the 3d tool play around with these options I used to play with this from uh, Zara version 1.2 I think from back when it was called Corel Zara I think they still had this tool in there and I believe a lot of portions of this software are written in assembly which makes it very fast and I think that's why you can visualize these very nicely in real time um, so yeah, back in the day I created a lot of 3D stuff with Zara uh, effects and texts and you know, my friends were surprised how cool they looked. Of course nowadays, you know, this trend is no longer popular so people prefer flat design and things like this so it may not be, you know, something you want to overdo. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you like my tutorial, feel free to sign up and uh, not sign up, subscribe to my channel. And, uh, you know, look in the description. There is a link to a playlist where you see all of my Zara Designer Pro tutorials. And if you sign up, uh, if you subscribe to my channel, you will find more tutorials for graphics, video editing, marketing, online web design and so on. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your feedback. If you have any sort of questions about Zara or any other software that I'm presenting and if you would like me to do a video uh, demonstrating some sort of feature, let me know in the comments and I will do it. Thank you for watching again and see you next time.